Voss asks us to look at the end of verse 24 in 1 Samuel 19. And he says, notice this, that when it comes to the uh, prophes- the, the um, stripping off his clothes and to prophesying, notice that it says, he too, bringing into view what? The way that he joined with the prophets and stripping off his clothes, probably just uh, uh, with an upper garment, and um, and he too prophesied before Samuel. But notice this: he too is omitted with he lay naked all that day and all that night. Now, what does that indicate? Well, think of it now. Saul did something that he thought would distinguish him above these prophets, show more devotion to the Lord. What's significant here in the absence of he too is that it seems to be, Voss says this, it seems to be a special judgment on Saul because Voss notes that in the next narrative, David escapes while Saul is laying naked all day and all night, prophesying. Now, Why would Voss say that this prophesying of Saul, which seems to be a good thing, why does he say it's a judgment on Saul? Well, he says it's a judgment on Saul because David escapes. David is the Lord's anointed. Saul, remember, is a desperate, political, ambitious, pragmatic, vicious, spiteful, small, narrow human being. He's a king like the nations. He is just like the nation's kings. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so what does Saul want to do as a king who is not after the Lord's heart? He wants to excel the prophets in the same way he wants to excel David. What makes Saul want to hurl his spear the most? I'll tell you. Saul has slain his thousands. David, his tens of thousands. That tore Saul to pieces yeah. because of his pride. So really what does he do? Really got his here? goat. Okay. Or his he sheep. got his goat. So what does he do? Now listen, this is very fascinating. He dis tell me if this sounds familiar. He disrobes, exposes his nakedness, not full nudity, but he exposes his nakedness just as Adam and Eve's nakedness was exposed before God in sin, and just as Noah's nakedness was exposed before God in his drunkenness. In both instances, nakedness is a sign of what? Judgment, of sin and shame, sin and guilt. Right. So in, with Saul, rather than follow the prophets, Saul sought to expose and exalt himself. When they're finished, Saul remains. But what is Saul doing? Laying there, exposing his nakedness before all, all day long and all night. It might not be and probably isn't this full nakedness. Voss makes that clear. But unlike the prophets, and therefore motivated by something in addition to what motivates the prophets, and contrary to it, Saul, through his own ambition, shows forth himself, presents himself, lays bare what? Himself for all to see. And he's thinking perhaps something like this, that if I can outdo the prophets, perhaps I can outdo David. Do you hear it? For him, it's personal. For him, it's competitive. For him, it's not good for David to have fame. It's not good for the prophets to speak forth the word in this ecstasy. He wants to do that and then some. And it's the and then some that exposes the heart of Saul. This is an emblem of Saul seeking to outdo the prophets and David in the flesh Motivated by personal and political ambition, Saul exposes himself as wicked before the Lord. And you, and and what does it get? Instead of Samuel at the end of this narrative saying, Look at Saul and follow his example, (laughs) you hear prophetic silence, and people are saying, What is he doing? Who is that? Well, so so what what does it mean? It means they don't recognize clearly that he is a prophet. Why? Because he's not. He's not a prophet 
of the order of Samuel, just as he is not a king of the order of David. Yeah, and that he would have preferred that the people would have you know, said this at the end, thus it is said, is Saul also among the prophets? He would have liked to add a few uh, verses to that and say, well, Samuel has prophesied his thousands of words, but Saul has prophesied his tens of thousands. Yes. That would have been his preference. 